okay guys uh, good morning so my name is samir and uh, i'll be a faculty for this adb and when it comes to my uh, experience i'll just walk you through uh, i have around uh, 10 plus years of experience in it and uh, on the clouds since the past 3 years i'm working on to this cloud technologies okay uh, that's it uh, working in some corporate okay so guys uh, let us start with this now so what is before we go ahead let us see and guys uh, i want everyone to just have an interaction so i want the session to be an interactive rather than me talking on uh, a side i want everyone to interact with me okay guys so let us start with this so let us say here Azure Data Engineering. What is Azure Data Engineering? Yes, guys. Everyone, I'm audible. Please. Yes, audible, Samir. Audible. Okay. So now, <clears throat> this is what is Azure Data Engineering. So basically, Azure Data Engineering is a pack is a is a packed into the is a packed in the form of services in the form of what is that services azure data engineering is packed in the form of what services the following are the various services provided for various operations in the uh, that is nothing but that is nothing but in the uh, azure data engineering so the following are the services let us see what is a first one what is it you have it we have the first one here as a azure is azure data bricks azure data bricks and then we have the next one after this we have the azure data factory and apart from this, we have the next service that is called as Azure Synapse. Azure Synapse. And next one, after this, many services are there, but I'm listing few of them. Okay, so we have the Azure Artificial Intelligence, AI, or else we can also refer it as a ml that is called as machine learning okay so these all are the services packed into this azure data engineering that means all end to end solutions for the data that is nothing but data engineering means end to end solution for the data so now guys what is this azure data fact back uh, that is azure data bricks is used and what is the purpose of it so guys this service called azure data bricks is provided by the microsoft to perform the job of etl so guys what is this etl where etl stands for what extraction extraction transformation extraction transformation okay guys extraction transformation and loading so the azure databricks is provided for azure databricks is a service provided by the microsoft provided by the microsoft within the azure data engineering for the purpose of extraction transformation and loading guys this extraction transformation and loading what it is let us try to understand this first. So guys, this extraction, transformation and loading is nothing but it is a process. It is a process where, guys, it is a process where data is summarized. Where the data is summarized. Where the data is summarized. Where the data is what is that summarized and this summarized data is used for decision making 
is or this summarized data is used for what decision making so whereas what is this process of extraction transformation and loading so this process of guys extraction transformation and loading this process of extraction transformation and loading uh, basically uh, consists of requires the following what is that source source that means what source and the next one it requires as a target source and the target now guys what is a source and what is a target so basically between the source and the target this process of etl is applied always okay irrespective of whatever the thing you service we use it generally i'm i'm talking about the etl that is nothing but etl is the process where etl is the process where the data guys etl is the process uh, etl is a process where the data is summarized okay so what is the source what is this target let us try to understand this guys source is a place where we get the raw data source is a place where we get what is that guys raw data and whereas this raw data is extracted as per the requirement in the process of extraction this raw data is extracted as per the requirement in the process of extraction and once the extraction means what picking up the data picking up the data whereas after this process of extraction is done the process of transformation is implemented transformation is the actual process where the data is converted into the required format by the customer and once the transformation is done guys on the data or applied on the data the data is finally prepared prepared and it is loaded and it is what loaded and where it is loaded it is loaded into the target that is called as a destination here my part now guys uh, this is bit technical i want to simplify it and explain it to you okay what exactly now guys uh, all of you are, are you able to hear my voice everyone please come out yeah yeah so now guys suppose you go to a supermarket to buy a vegetables you go to a supermarket to buy a vegetables tell me now what are the uh, that is how many vegetables will be there in a supermarket let us say reliance fresh you have been to the reliance fresh to buy the fresh vegetables now tell me how many vegetables you have it you will be having many almost all all vegetables you will have it am i right so now guys tell me a uh, answer now do you purchase all the vegetables or you will purchase only those vegetables which is required for you yes my question is that you have been to a supermarket yes guys you have been to supermarket and uh, that is more super or you have been to a uh, that is reliance fresh where you can find many vegetables are you going to are you going to purchase all the vegetables or some of the vegetables only required vegetables will purchase required that means before leaving you will decide what curry has to be cooked what curry has to be cooked based on that curry you are going to buy the vegetables am i right some two three vegetables so now what you are doing is suppose you have been to a supermarket and picked up some five vegetables out of some 100 vegetables are there different varieties of 100 vegetables are there out of those 100 vegetables you are purchasing only five vegetables why those five because that is required for the cooking process you want to cook only those five am i right you have picked up you have picked up what you will do once you pick up you will put it into your basket bill it off everything is done now you will come home now tell me what is the form of vegetables now it's raw form yes exactly very good so the vegetables in the raw form so now guys what you will do you have to eat that vegetables you have to eat those vegetables 
as we are human so we require to eat those vegetables but we need to cook it am i right cook it so what you will do you will cut the vegetables chop the vegetables everything you will do it and then you will put it on on a that is something but uh, uh, they will put it on a stove and ultimately from the raw farm from the raw farm all the five vegetables you will pour it in one uh, uh, that is nothing but uh, uh, bowl and you will cook it you will cook it that means you are converting this raw form of vegetables into cooked format am i right or not are you changing the form of vegetables or not for eating purpose yes, yes guys yes yeah you have converted ultimately the vegetables are cooked the vegetables are cooked now the curry is ready so that means what you are doing you have bought the raw vegetables you have first of all picked up the vegetables you have been to the supermarket and picked up the vegetables and once you have picked up the vegetables what you are doing you bought them home and uh, cut it off and chopped it and once the chopping everything is done you are changing the form of those vegetables from the raw form to what is that cooked form as per our requirement ultimately once the vegetables is cooked and ready then what you will do finally you will eat that is nothing but called as what loading same way guys picking up the vegetables picking up the vegetables from multiple 100 th- vegetables are there but you are picking up only five vegetables and those vegetables picking up the process of vegetables from the supermarket is called as what extraction it is called as the process of what extraction whereas the extraction is done then what you are doing transform that means you are getting them home and chopping them cutting them and putting them into the bowl to cook and ultimately cooking those vegetables that means you are converting the raw vegetables to what is that cooked format in the form of a curry am i right or not ultimately once that is called as a process of what cooking is the process of transforming cooking is the process of what transforming ultimately once the transformation is done finally your destination is what your destination is the curry so curry you will eat it that's it that is nothing but finally the process of loading is nothing but the cooking that's an yes, that's nothing but eating the same so hence this is actually you have the process in what extraction transformation and loading that's it guys nothing else there is no technicality there is no something is you know where you need to worry about how the things will move on all the things you need not worry about this simply extraction transformation and loading is the process extraction transformation and loading is the process of converting the picking up the required data picking up the required data and transforming the data as per the requirement and ultimately transformed data you will load it into the target okay so guys is it clear for everyone what is etl actually yes guys i want an answer ma please huh? yeah yes yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so before we see some examples on how actually this process is taken place let us try to understand few more things here then we'll come back to this let us try to understand first of all what is a cloud what is a clouds and what is an on premises then we'll come back to this okay so first of all let us try to understand what is cloud so now guys because uh, what is it you have it uh, azure azure data engineering is a cloud based engineering cloud based data engineering am i right so now guys i wanted to explain you or let us try to understand first of all guys what is a clouds and what is an on premises let us try to understand first of all what is a cloud basically okay so guys when it comes to this cloud um, okay just forget about this cloud i'll just give you an example for this now guys uh, you all of you are using the mobile phones am i right all of you are using the mobile phones or not guys yes yeah i want to yeah, reply yeah. from every one of you please guys try to respond yes are you using the mobile phone or not yes we are yeah. 
So now every one of you, us is using the mobile phone. Now guys, when it comes to this mobile phone, uh, you in the mobile phone, we have some memory. Will it be there memory or not? Yes. Every mobile has some memory or not? Yes. Yeah. So now, what are the types of memories you will have in your mobile phone? Can you tell me? Yes, guys. Mobile uh, SD memory. <clears throat> yes, mobile internal memory and scan disk memory. That means you will have the memories in the mobile phone. You will have the memory in the mobile phone, such as what is that? SD card memory. So I'm writing it here. In mobile, in mobile, you will have the memory. So that memory is called as mobile inbuilt memory. Am I right? With every default you purchase a mobile phone, you will get mobile memory as a free. Am I right? Mobile memory as free. Apart from the mobile memory, guys, you will also have, okay, uh, okay, you will also have, guys, you will also have a memory that is called as SD card memory. What do you mean SD card memory, guys? SD card memory is nothing but scan disk card memory. That means, suppose every mobile you are getting it with a 16 GB internal storage memory. That means this 16 GB, guys, this 16 GB is a default memory. That means in your mobile phone, you can store up to 16 GB memory. Whereas, if you require to store more memory rather than thus, you want to store one more uh, that is nothing but 32 gb of memory you wanted to store it for that what we do we buy an external sd card and we will just put it in your mobile phone okay put it in your mobile phone and from that point onwards you can use this memory of 32 so now tell me totally what is the amount of memory you have it in your mobile phone now 32 plus 16 Please tell me now 32 plus 16 means what guys 38 gb Huh? 48 GB. Very good. So 48 GB memory. Totally, you can store up to 48 GB memory now <clears throat> in your mobile phone along with SD card. Now, the question is that now thus further, I have some more videos and photos, etc., which is amounting to around okay, 100 GB. 100 GB. Let us assume amounting to around 500 GB. Now tell me, how do you store this 500 GB memory? You already utilize the 32 GB. You already utilize the 16 GB memory. You have to store more 500 GB memory is required now. So now tell me, guys, what is the way you adopt it? Just think generally because we do it in the daily basis, this kind of job. Tell me now. OneDrive or Google Drive inputs. Ah, very good, very good. So that means you will now you will take the support of a Google Drive. Am I right? Google Drive. But the problem is that Google is also providing you by default 15 GB as a memory. Am I right? Huh? 15 GB of the memory by default Google is providing to you. But now you have to store 15 GB or 500 GB, guys. 500 GB. So now what you have to do, tell me now. Tell me, guys. Yeah, please. Guys, please tell me, ma. Did you get my question? What I mean to tell you? If you get the question, just simply say yes. Or else I'll repeat the question once again. My question is that. I'll repeat the question once again. My question is that now. My, mo my, my mobile memory already has 16 GB memory. And SD card, I have installed it. I have put some SD card and it has the 32 GB memory. Totally both the memories amounting to 48 GB. But I have some more 500 GB memory to be stored. So for that, I took the support of Google Drive. And Google Drive is providing only 15 GB memory. How, what is the alternative for me now? External hard disk. Huh? External hard disk. External hard disk, that is fine. Okay. But I want the data. Okay, no problem. One more way is that you can ask the Google. That is fine. That is very good. Okay. But here, the thing is that you can ask the Google to increase the size. That means from 15 GB, I want 500 GB. So Google is providing, <clears throat> Google will provide you 500 GB of memory. 
free of cost or they will charge something for it they will charge something they will, will charge. charge that means after 15 gb even if you store 0.1 mb also okay then it is going to charge you so you can buy the space on the google drive by paying some cost now guys totally i bought it i bought this one also everything is done now totally the amount of memory what is that amount of memory i have 548 gb memory totally i have it now totally how much memory i have it 548 gb that means 48 gb in my mobile phone and uh, <clears throat> 100 on my google drive now one fine day i lost my mobile phone one fine day i lost my mobile phone guys that is my query now my query is that when i lose my mobile phone so i could not able to trace it off now the question is that i bought a new mobile phone i have to buy a new mobile phone hence i bought the new mobile phone now once you bought a new mobile phone guys please tell me uh, can you recollect this 48 gb can you recollect this 500 gb memory or not Possible, possible. Yes, exactly. Very good. So we can say that 500 GB. Ah, uh, you can recollect it by just using the synchronize option. You can just log in with your mail ID, enter the password, and in the same way you can recollect it. But what about the 48 GB? The 48 GB memory is lost with the mobile phone because this memory is called as physical memory. Am I right? this memory is called as what physical memory physical memory so hence i cannot recollect it whereas the, the memory or the data which is stored on the google drive google drive can be recollected so we can say that the google drive we can call it as a cloud am i right guys everyone google memory is called as what cloud memory google memory is called as what is that guys cloud memory cloud data memory it is called as what cloud data memory cloud data memory whereas the physical memory of your mobile phone we can refer it as what on premises memory am i right guys i can re refer it as what on premises so now tell me what is the drawback guys now tell me what is the drawback you have what is the drawback you have between on premises memory and cloud memory on premises memory once you lose your mobile phone you cannot recollect it but the same can be recollected using the cloud am i right or not so now this is the drawback you have it in the on premises data so now guys just for 548 gb which is required for us now what we have done we took the support of the cloud rather than taking the support of the mobile phone so in the same way what you have done tell me now <clears throat> what you have done that means you have moved physically guys you have moved physically from the cloud from the physical mobile phone memory to what is that cloud memory that is called as google drive memory am i right or not so nowadays every one of us storing the data in mobile phone in built memory or we are storing it data into the google drive guys tell me now huh google drive most of us every time we will store the data in the google drive am i right everyone so why do you store the data in the google drive tell me now can recover uh yes can recover it suppose tomorrow you have traveled to other country suppose united states or america i did not take your mobile phone now now what happened is as you did not take your mobile phone and you are there finally in this uh, some united states of america so can you get this google drive memory received to your mobile phone in even after reaching the usa tell me now guys yeah of course that means the access is possible even irrespective of the location so we can say that we can access this data which is stored in the google drive from anywhere in the world 
am i right from anywhere in the world without worrying about the physical location where my data is stored the same way guys tell me now actually google drive is stored where the google drive stores the data into the cloud environment into what is that cloud environment so cloud environment is what ultimately cloud environment is nothing but ultimately it stores the data physically into the data centers so every cloud provider has the data centers and now in these data centers the entire physical data will be stored in this data center the physical data will be stored am i right guys everyone okay uh that somebody uh, just put it yourself in mute mode i think there is no issues from my end yeah guys okay now fine now so now i think the voice is background voice is not there it's fine now okay guys there is no disturbance now i think from the background <clears throat> please say yes yeah it's fine now okay. ah so now guys now so in the same way guys here you have a cloud and on premises cloud means what cloud is nothing but storing the data onto the google drive is your cloud environment and now guys on premises nothing but storing the data into your mobile phone physical memory mobile phone memory mobile phone memory is called as what on premises is called as what guys what is it called as on premises am i right guys so now guys as we are an individual still we wanted to save the data still we wanted to move it our from the physical memory to what google drive memory in the same way lot of the corporates many corporates now what they are doing is they are planning or they are moving from the physical data to what is that cloud data so for that many cloud providers has come out many cloud providers has come out to provide the support for it so for that the following are the cloud providers we have it what is that the first one is called as what azure azure is a cloud provider from microsoft so microsoft what it is doing is it is marketing their product the cloud product it is marketing its cloud product with a name called what azure okay and then we have what is that the next one provider as what amazon or we can say aws aws is from what yes, amazon web service amazon web service and the third one what is that you have it google gcp so we have the gcp which stands for what google cloud platform google cloud platform okay guys google cloud platform then afterwards then we have what is that uh, alibaba this is a china based okay uh, that is cloud provider and now then we have what is that uh, uh, we have the sap cloud sap cloud likewise then you have even the sap cloud is there oracle cloud is there etc 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 these are all the cloud providers but whereas the market leader is the two or three first three are the market leaders and number one is the azure number one is the azure in providing the cloud services so now guys these cloud services are basically classified or divided into three categories these cloud services are basically classified or divided into three categories what is that first one is called as what eas eas means what guys eas stands for what infrastructure infrastructure as a service and then you have what is that pias pias stands for what guys pias stand for what platform as a service then guys third one is cias <clears throat> cias stand for what guys software as a service software as a service guys these are the three different 
services provided by the cloud providers that means yaas as a service piaas as a service and tiaas as a service these are the three categories of services provided by the cloud providers getting my point so now entire cloud service is classified or build classified or build according to these categories eas pias and cias infrastructure as a service means what guys suppose just now we have discussed that you require 500 gb of data to be stored that means you require what space on the cloud space on the cloud to store that 500 gb data am i right so whereas this all storages suppose you require what is it all the storages how much storage you require it 500 gb or 1000 uh, okay uh, petabyte okay petabyte so all these okay all these can you see here all this is the responsibility of the uh, uh, that is nothing but the cloud provider and it provides this service in the form of what infrastructure as a service now guys you require a ram random access memory you require a ram speed of uh, let us say 56 gb so now guys you need not buy an external ram anything simply you need to inform your cloud provider that this is the ram speed you require it so he will set it for you so you not worry about the physical components or the physical parts now getting my point next after this platform as a service suppose guys suppose 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 what is platform guys what is platform platform is generally a type of an operating system now guys we are using android as an uh, uh, operating system and uh, can you see here uh, i uh, i uh, that is nothing but uh, apple 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 is using uh, some uh, operating system okay so hence these are the various operating system okay these are the various operating system used by the various uh, that is nothing but up uh, that is nothing but various uh, uh, that is uh, mobiles we can say in the same way if at all you have a computer so generally in the computer what is the operating system we use it guys can you tell me what is the operating system we use it in a pc guys tell me now generally we use the windows as operating system but now my question is that i have a very massive amount of data and this massive amount of data is not supported on the windows operating system most of the time let us assume banking data banking data is very huge massive amount of data so now it is not uh, supported on the windows operating system hence we require some other operating system let us call as what mainframes mainframes is an operating system mainframes is an operating system from what ibm so you need not buy the license of this you need not worry about the operating system simply you need to inform your cloud provider azure that you require the main frames operating system he will take care and now guys suppose you require some softwares softwares in the sense you require some reporting softwares or you require some analytical softwares such as you require some uh, okay uh, you require some okay uh, softwares uh, or uh, you require any kind of you know reporting that is nothing but suppose you require power bi power bi or suppose you require some cognos you need not buy the license of this need not worry about this simply you need to inform your cloud provider that you require it he is going to buy that for you he is going to buy that for you everything is taken care by the that is nothing but by the cloud provider in the service called what software as a service so these are the three categories of services we have it so whereas the cloud providers has divided their service based on these three and based on these three categories only they will bill you they will they are going to bill you it is as simple as guys as simple as simply you log into this uh, you know you have the ott platforms is there amazon prime netflix etc what you will do you will enter your mobile number and a password that's it you will enter it into the application and once you enter into the application if you want to watch a new movie then you have to subscribe that particular premium subscription or not tell me now guys you need to buy a subscription or not premium subscription to watch a latest movie yes tell me do we require to buy it or not yes sir yes yes required so in the same way here here also whichever the service is required in the same way simply we need to buy it 
buy it from the azure buy means what here we are just uh, that means utilizing it paying it that's it utilizing and paying the cost it is just like renting off renting off okay without having an ownership without claiming an ownership you can do your task just by paying them okay just by paying them the cost of the same so whereas where these are the three categories of service provided by the cloud now guys the cloud is clear for me and on premises is also clear for me everything is clear but my question is that source target and this thing is done already this is also extraction transformation loading done but i am my question is that what is exactly the use of the adb that is called as azure data bricks what it does we have to understand this so now guys let us come back here when it comes to the azure data bricks the azure data bricks is a service of microsoft is a service of microsoft which is provided to perform the job of extraction transformation and what is that loading to perform the job of extraction transformation and what is that loading the azure data bricks is a is a service of a microsoft provided to perform perform the job of extraction transformation and what is that loading okay guys now when it comes to this azure data bricks exactly let us try to understand this etl with some example guys here i have a data so let us say here i have some data here so i am using guys i am using it this as a source source and now i have the source and now guys in the bottom i'll write that target my query is that i have a uh, data of a supermarket and supermarket data is given like this product id product id product rate product quantity sold and date of sales now guys some this uh, you know you can see here now my query is that guys my query is that uh i and here is the customer the customer is, is, is here the customer is here the customer wanted to know guys this is a customer that customer means what the owner of the supermarket is a customer for us the customer wanted to know what is the change in sales or what is the sales difference on 26 1st of this month and 22nd of this month whether the sales has increased between these two dates or not he wanted to know first of all so guys first of all to know this query or to report him the same to the customer what is that you require it you require the source and the source consisting of the following information what is that Pro product id product rate product quantity sold date of sales let us give the product id is something like this product rate let us give it as 100 rupees and the quantity sold is 10 and then you have a date of sales date of sale is 21 guys 21 11 2022 20, and then you have the product uh, something like this okay, product id and the rate is 200 and the quantity sold is 05 and now the date of sales is 21/11/2022 and then i have something like this ah so i have 500 Zero two, and now guys, I have twenty one, eleven, twenty twenty two. Now guys, this is the thing we have it. <clears throat> first day, that means what? Twenty first data is already recorded. Do we have twenty second data? No, we will write the twenty second data. So as you wanted to write the twenty second data, simply what I will do is I'll copy this information and I'll paste it here. Okay, that's it, guys. Let us see it here how to make it. So simply copy this information, and I'm pasting it the same information. But now what I will do is instead of this I will make it as two hundred rate is two hundred and here I will make it as rate as a three hundred and here I'll make the rate as one thousand. That's it. Okay. Just now, guys. Uh, product quantity sold as it is, but I'm changing the rate here. What's the rate? Twenty two, twenty two, and now guys twenty two, twenty two. Now guys. Here you have it. Ah, uh, now tell tell me now. As you have uh, this two days data, tell me now. Uh, the two days data is here or not, guys? 
Now to tell me, is there any difference in the sales? Is there any difference in the sales from 21st to 22nd? Can you tell me, guys? Yes, yes different is there, sir. Different is there. Difference is there. How can you say? How can you say? Just by looking into the data. Am I right or not? Just by yes, looking yes. into the data, yeah, just by looking into the data, you can say there is a difference. Why you are able to say? Because you have only how many records are there, guys? Totally six records, very simple, small data. You can look it here and decide it. Am I right or not, everyone? Huh? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. If you have massive amount of data, can you look onto the data and decide it or not? Uh, Suppose each table yeah, having yes. some one lakh records, can you decide it by looking into the records? No, not possible. Not possible. So for that, here we use the technique. What is that? ETL. Let us see how the ETL is applied here. Extraction. ETL stands for what? Extraction. 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 Let us see how the extraction is done here. The first process of extraction is that where you have to pick up, where you have to pick up. Do we require the product ID to find out the net sales amount of the day? Do you require the product ID, guys? Not required. Not required. Do you require the product rate? Yes, required. Required. Quantity sold? Required. Date of sales? Required. So now, guys, I'm picking up these three columns. Picking up these three columns is the process of what is that? It is the process of extraction. It is a process of what? Extraction. Now the columns are picked up. Now, guys, next comes transformation. Picking up is done. Transformation. Now in the transformation, how can you find out the net? You want to find out the net sales amount each day. So to find out the net sales amount, do we need to perform some arithmetic operations on the data or not? Some that means some mathematical calculations is required or not? Hello, can anyone hear the voice? Yes, yes. Sir, screen is not visible. Actually, he's left. Sir, he's left. Maybe he's facing that partition. Okay, okay. Shamir is not there. Sorry, guys, got disconnected due to some uh, network issue. Sorry. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm audible now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm audible now. 
yeah so got disconnected due to some uh, this thing network issue okay so now guys okay we were just a minute just a minute so just a minute just a minute. i i'm just looking out for this uh, i don't have this uh, host rights just a minute let me call the people to provide me the host right because once Because you can provide a host rights to Shami. Might be your is the host. I'm audible, guys. Please tell me, I'm audible. Yes. Uh, now, guys, see here. Uh, so we have what is that? We were discussing about the calculations. Hundred into ten is what is one thousand. Two hundred into five is what thousand. Five hundred into two what? Again, tell me now, guys. Thousand. Now tell me, guys. You have one totally. Calculate the sum here. What is the sum? Can you tell me the sum, guys? The sum of these three is what? Yes, guys, the sum of these three is what? It is 3000. So I can say that. Can I say that here? Can you see? 3000 is the net sales amount. Am I right, guys? Am I right, everyone? So this you are doing it under the process of transformation. Now, it is done for the 21st day. What about the 22nd day? Guys, can you tell me? Please, please come out, all of you. Help me out in this. Yes, guys. Tell me now for the 22nd day. Ah, 200 into 10 means what? 200 into 10 means what, guys? Tell me now. 2000. 300 into 5 means what, guys? Tell me now. 1500. Yes. Huh? 1500. Very good. Uh, 1000 into 2 means what? 2000. Very good. So now calculate the sum now. 55. Five, 5500. Very good. So now, guys, 5500. Now, guys, this is the net sales amount. Now, guys, this process is called as a transformation process. It's done now. Finally, you will be loading. Where you will be loading the data, guys? Tell me now. Finally, you will be loading the loading, loading the data into the target. So, how will I load the data? I will load the data like this. See here. I'm loading the data. So, net sales amount underscore sales underscore amount. Net sales amount is what, guys? Tell me now. Net sales amount is what? 3000. And now for which date it is? So I am declaring one more column here. Oh yes, that is date of sales. Date of sales is, I am using it as 21-11-2022. And then we have, what is that guys? Tell me now. Uh, 5,500. And it is on 22nd slash 11-2022. Now guys, this particular thing, that is nothing but called as output. Now can you see here? This entire thing, what you have done, guys, can you see this entire thing, this entire thing, what we have done, we have transformed this much data. Can you see here, this much data of two tables, I have transformed into one table and in the summarized manner. So this data, you can report it to the customer, stating that this is the difference of sales between 21st and 22nd day of November 2022. 
Am I right, guys? Everyone? Huh? This process is called as the process of what? Extraction, transformation, and loading. And this is done by using the Azure Data Bricks here. By using what is that? Azure Data Bricks. It is done by the process called what? Using the service called what? Azure Data Bricks, where extraction, transformation, and loading of data is done by the Azure Data Bricks. Clear all of you now? <clears throat> now, as a part of this course, guys, we are going to see this Azure Data Bricks. Okay, Azure Data Bricks. And the total duration of this course will be 60 hours. Okay, 60 hours, but it will be, we are quoting it as 60, but it will go beyond the 60 hours because we have <clears throat> many life scenarios we are going to look into. Okay, and uh, that's the thing we have it. And uh, we are going to start the classes from tomorrow, the same 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, guys, 10 15 in the morning. That's the timings we have it. 10.15 to around 11.30. Every day you will have 1 hour 15 minutes class. 1 hour to 1 hour 15 minutes class. And next, after this, uh, guys, uh, when it comes to this, uh, the classes after this, even uh, the resume planning and everything will be given to you as a support. Okay. And uh, contents brochure, you can check it. Okay. Uh, Azure Data Factory and Azure Data Bricks, both are used for the same process. But Azure Databricks, here you can use the, uh, it is called as CUI. <clears throat> that is called as uh, Character User Interface, where you we need to use different languages, Python, Scala, R, and SQL. These are the four languages used in the Bricks, Azure Databricks. Whereas in the Azure Data Factory, it is totally a menu driven. It is totally a menu driven. Both performs the same job, <clears throat> both performs the same job, but this is a menu driven and this is a, uh, uh, that is nothing but the uh, code based, you have it, okay. So that's it about uh, this thing. And uh, every day I uh, will have the class, uh, one hour to one hour 15 minutes and uh, Saturday, Monday to Saturday, fr Friday, you will have the classes. So generally Saturdays and Sundays, I don't take the classes. If it is required to cover up the portion, then it will, will continue on Saturdays. Guys. That's the only thing we have. Okay. So now you can ask me any questions if you have. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, like I just wanted to know there is coding part is there in the curriculum. So we need to learn coding as well. Yes, of course. Coding means whichever it is required, we will discuss it in the class itself. As such, separately, you need not dis learn the coding somewhere going outside. Okay. So what is that? I will explain you. Uh, that will be easy only, not so tough enough for people, what the people think. Okay. So we will be seeing here the coding in four different languages. See, there is SQL, uh, Python, R, and Scala. I'll uh, write the coding. Yeah. Sir, like what is PySpark? That, that I am hearing a lot about. See, PySpark is basically Python and the Spark together. It is called a Spark, PySpark. PySpark. Okay. okay. Do we need to learn that also for ADB? Yes, of course. We, I will teach you that PySpark also I'll teach. Okay. 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 Thanks, sir. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Yeah. Sir, this is a duration, sir. Yeah. Duration would be 60 hours. Okay. okay. 60 hours. Uh, Azure uh, Data Factory. Huh? Is it required to learn both Azure Data Factory and Azure Data Week? It uh, basically... For industries. Uh, it, there is, see, guys, there is no connection between Azure Data Factory and Data Week. If you learn it, that is up to you. If you don't learn it, then also no problem. You can get the job individually on Azure Databricks as well as on the Data Factory. These are two different services you have it. Okay. Sir, if there are any deployment process, are you uh, explaining, sir? Uh -huh. Deployment process. Yes, of course. Deployment process we will see now, anyways. Without the, this is all a technical subject. Ah, yes, sir. So, ADF also there, right? ADF and uh, ADB. 
okay uh, diplomatic process is required that, after that finally classes were over right yes 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 but yes. is there a combined that, batch for uh, both uh, data bricks and data factory ah uh, is there any combined batch i mean see you will have data factory batch is morning 7 am started today itself along with you and data bricks is this time combined batches means these are two different services so i teach them differently yes yes sir yes combined we will see combinedly we will see a type of a project anyways a case study you can see not exactly the project case study i can see <coughs> See basically, uh, when it comes to the data, for someone is typing. So what is that? Monitor, optimize data storage, data processing. All this is covered, guys. And whatever the training we are going to look into, it is uh, basically okay. Uh, more than enough to write a certification also. Certification for ADB whenever you want to write it. Okay, this is enough. So as a part of even the. Co oh, that is nothing but everyday videos will be provided to you. That's it. Uh, any other questions? Any, yeah. any batch for the evening? Huh? Any batch for the evening? Evening. Right now, no. There is no batch in the evening. So morning batches only we have it. it's there one batch is there but it's already started 12 12 to 14 days back it has started already yeah 12 classes has already done in that samit so, sir adb and uh. ada both are providing azure right uh, microsoft what is the main difference uh. between adb and uh, ada basically the adf what they are using is uh, if there is a project in where you are uh, going to use the adf and adb both the adf is used for data ingestion process up to only data ingestion process only the adf they are using it for the after the data ingestion ingestion of the data ingestion that means insertion of the data okay once the data is inserted the data picking up the data from there and uh, preparing or moving the data into delta lake and then performing the visualization for all this process we are using the adv only okay got it yes any other questions guys Okay, Sir, any, specific, any specific software huh? we have to download for this? No software yeah. is required. No software is required. No licenses is required. Simple, very subscription. I'll tell you. I'll show you. You have to subscribe that. That's it. No software. No piracy. Nothing is there. No piracy. Yeah, yeah, no software. Yeah, but but it 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 is it is asking some card, yeah, credit card number asking. Yeah, yeah, credit card obviously. <clears throat> That is for free subscription. It will uh, take you. Uh, uh, it will charge some two rupees from your credit card, and the free subscription will be valid for thirty days. Okay, and after that you have to give, go for pay as you go model. That pay as you go model will not cost you if you it's only usage only. It is just like pay as you go means it will not charge you more than seven to eight hundred for an individual. So okay, because we are uh, working on because we are here yeah, we are working on an on a type of you know an organization. Then even I'm taking multiple batches. Even then uh, I'm not getting the bill more than two thousand rupees per month, two thousand to two thousand five hundred. But there is a technique for uh, saving this. uh that is nothing but how to save the cost and all i will uh, that is anyways tell you those techniques so if you follow that that's not a problem for you to make out that's a thing yeah keep providing that uh, license code in per per 
baru tadi sport bos. Ah? Huh? Ya kini provide um, license akun. Sorry, kini providing akun tu. So baru for apa tadi sport bos? Account, you can take it. It's not me to provide you. You can take it directly. I'll show you the way how to create account. Everything I'll show you. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay, guys. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, guys. Thank you. Then we'll meet tomorrow morning at the same time. Yeah. Please, please go ahead. Any questions? <laughs> okay sir bye okay okay thank you guys we'll meet tomorrow uh, 10 10:15 okay thank you everyone thank you yeah thank you bye yeah thank you thank you bye okay so now let us start with this Okay, guys. So, <clears throat> let's start again, and uh, just we'll uh, begin the introduction part today. So, guys, uh, we're using it as your data bricks. Okay, we're using the Azure data bricks. So, basically. What is Azure Databricks? Guys, the Azure Databricks is nothing but it is a cloud-based service. Cloud-based service provided by Microsoft. It is a cloud-based service, guys. It is a cloud-based service provided by Microsoft. So Azure Databricks is a cloud based service provided by microsoft it is a cloud based service provided by microsoft to perform the job of etl so now guys what do you mean by etl guys the etl <coughs> stands for yes the etl stands for already I told you yesterday etl stands for what extraction yes extraction transformation extraction transformation and loading extraction transformation and loading so whereas this process of extraction transformation and loading is a process of yes is a process of what data data summarization is a process of what data summarization it is a process of what guys data summarization so extraction transformation and loading this is a process of what is that data summarization it is a process of what data summarization wherein for the process of etl that is called as extraction transformation and loading guys we require the following what is that we require the source first of all source means what the source of data source guys source and then we require what is it the another one as a target we require the first thing as a source and the second thing as a target so now guys when it comes to the source what do you mean by source okay guys what is the source of income the place from where we get the money is called a source of income in the same way a place where uh, that is nothing but the source from where you get the data is called as what source of data source is nothing but actually it is guys source is nothing but what actually it is is guys source is nothing but uh, actually it is okay actually it is the source of data that is a place from where we get the data is called as what source of data okay guys a place from where we get the data is called as what source of data so i'm using source of data 
is a source of data so now guys tell me now the source of data so according to you what are the sources which are available from where we get the data guys tell me now what might be the sources from where you get the data now guys for example for example for example now <clears throat> you are typing or you are recording some information of your expense house expense so where do you write your house expense generally nowadays we are using in digital format only we are not taking a pen and paper and writing the things everything we are digitally writing it tell me now house expenses where do you write it in which type of file do you write it tell me now guys this much is the earning for this month and this much is the uh, expenditure you have incurred you have to write all these things so tell me now how do you write it guys in which file you use it or where you write it in the computer can you tell me guys somebody guys am i audible yeah am i audible guys everyone yes yes you are audible so you are understanding what i mean to tell you guys you are understanding what i mean to tell you my question is that suppose you have to write your household expenses not let us go into the broad scale we'll just go to at home, our place uh, you want to write a household expenses where do you write this in information that is income expenditure you have to write it what type of thing you use it are you going to use in excel file guys or not yes yes so that is nothing but basically your house affairs or your uh, that is nothing but uh, house expenses and income you are going to write in an excel sheet but ultimately that is what that is but it nothing but the data that is nothing but what is that data so we can say what is that source of data is nothing but the place from where we get the data is called as what source of data a place from where we get the data is called as what source of data so we can get the data from what is that following files we can get the data okay files what type of files guys okay but ultimately the files will also receive the data from what ultimately business see we all are working for the business or not even though you are working as a data engineer that means you are working for a business or not tell me now guys yes everyone you are working for the business am i right everyone just give me a minute yes second yes just give me a second i'm all back okay sorry uh, so guys we all get the data we all uh, work for the business only though you are uh, though we are working here suppose you are working as a data engineer in an it sector that means are you working it for a business or not in fact that means you can you will get the data from the business from the business entities only we get the data am i right guys from the business entities only we get the data Yes, this data is recorded in the in the form of what is that files in the form of what is that files so what are the type of files you have it guys what are the type of files you have it uh, the files are the following so we can have what is that uh, yes guys uh, we can have what are excel files excel files yes, excel files and we can have what is that csv files which stands for what comma separated value files okay comma separated value files and uh, excel files comma separated value files and you have what is that json files json stands for what javascript object notation files okay and then afterwards what is it you have it excel file csv file comma separated value files json files and you have the uh, parquet files parquet files you have the parquet files okay guys you have the parquet files and then you can have what avro files and then we can also have what's that 
ORC files, various type of files. That means we get the data ultimately from the business, and this business will be recorded in the type in the form of what files, Excel files, comma separated value files, JSON files, Parquet file, Avro files, ORC files. Anyway, studio, don't don't worry about the files. Once we get into the subject, I will explain you about each and every file. You don't worry now. Okay. So this is nothing but the data we get it from where from these files. What we do from these files, guys, from these files, we get the data from these files, guys, from these files. Okay. From these files, we get the data. So ultimately what we do, we pull in the data. We pull in the data using the process called what extraction. We pull in the data by the process called what extraction. So extraction is done. And now guys, this extraction is done by what? By using the ADB. That is called as what? Azure Databricks. By using the Azure Databricks. By using the Azure Databricks. Guys, by using the Azure Databricks, we perform the process of extraction. That means extraction of data. Extraction, the full name is what? Extraction of data only, guys. Extraction of data. Extraction. Then extraction is done. Then next, what is the process you have it? Tell me now, guys. The next process, the next level of processing is what is that? Transformation. So transformation is nothing but the ultimate uh, uh, requirement. Based on the requirement of the customer, you're going to change the format of the data. You're going to change the structure of the data. You're going to design a new structure of the data. Am I right? This is called as what? Transformation. And once the transformation is done on this data, ultimately the process of loading will be taken place. And loading means what? The final data, whatever you have it, will be transferred to the destination. That is called as what? Target. That is called as what? Target. Or we can say destination we can say target or we can say destination we can say target or we can say what is that destination the data will be transferred here to the destination am i right guys everyone you guys everyone is following or not i want a reply guys if talk, yeah if you don't talk i cannot understand what is your thing okay so i want everyone to respond it guys so that I'll come to know whether you people are following or not. Okay. Anyways, so this is the first. Now, apart from guys, apart from getting the data from the files, we can also get the data from the business. We can also get the data from the business in the form of what database. And database can be what again? The databases. The database can be what it can be Oracle database. It can be the SQL Server database. Okay, it can be any kind of database you have. Whereas this kind of database, can you see here? This kind of database, when you receive the data, we can say that we have received the data from OLTP system. We have received the data from what is that? OLTP system. What do you mean OLTP? OLTP stands for Online Transaction Process. Online transaction process that is called as what OLTP system. Okay, OLTP system, you will receive the data. Getting my point, you will receive the data from what OLTP system. So now, guys, ultimately from this database, what we do, we pull in again the same process. We pull in the data by using the process of what guys, same process we perform it. Extraction will be done. That means using the ADB, we extract the data. We extract the data. And once the data is extracted, then what we do, guys? We perform the transformation on the data. We perform what is that? Transformation. Transformation is the actual process of data summarization or loading the data as per the requirement of the client. So now, guys, loading will be done. And finally, once the loading is done, guys, finally, once the loading is done, the loading will be done. Okay, the loading will be done into the destination that means this is where destination this will be your destination getting my point
now guys destination destination i'm linking up just to show you guys this all will reach the destination like this finally the data reaches the destination target is nothing but guys it is called as what destination destination okay now next one apart from this guys apart from getting the data from the businesses from the data into the databases or into the files we can also get the data everyone we can also get the data guys we can also get the data from another way it is called as what from the business only because we all working for business we get the data business data only we get it get it the data in the form of what live streaming data live streaming data such as guys live streaming data means what guys stock market data live streaming data suppose indian that is india versus pakistan match is going on you will get the live streaming am i right or not yes guys that is all called as what live streaming data even the live streaming data we pull in here as it is the live streaming data also we pull in here in as it is and this process is called as what the process of again extraction we perform the extraction on this data so can you see here we perform the extraction on this data and once the extraction is done then what happens again the process of transformation will become so what is the process of transformation transformation is the actual process of is this transformation is the actual process of what data summarization transformation is the actual process of what data summarization and once the data summarization is done guys finally what we do we load the data into the target we load the data into the target guys okay so now this all data whatever you have it that is source data destination data or whatever the data you have it finally will be recorded into the target that is called as sync system in azure it is also called as what the destination is also called as what sync system sync this is also called as what sync system guys okay it is also called as what sync system sync system okay so now can you see here this is how we get the data here ultimately we get the data from what various sources ultimately we get the data from what various sources and from these various sources what we do we extract the data we transform the data and we load the data into the target everyone okay so this all this can see extraction transformation and loading will be done by using the service guys this is a service adb is one service adb is one service guys likewise you can also have what is it adf is the another service likewise you can have synapse as the another service these are the various services we can do it okay so whereas can you see here guys this is how exactly things works up okay here everyone is following or not guys yeah i want a reply from all of you guys Yes, yes. Yes. Now, next after this, now guys, next one. Let us see exactly what exactly the what exactly the big data is. Big data. Now, guys, what is the big data? Big data is nothing but whatever the data you are getting. This data, this is called as big data only. The data from the business, whatever you are getting. is called as big data so just understand big data means not a very great concept something you know where you need to get confused it's not like that big data just split it guys split it big means what huge na huge or massive you can say data means what information so we can say that huge information you can say what is that huge information massive information huge information or massive information huge information or massive information is called as what big data big data 
okay where you have a massive amount of information is called as what big data ultimately we get the big data from what is it all these businesses only but what is that business what are the sources you can see let us see for that actually types of source of big data now guys types of sources of big data types of sources of okay type of types of sources of big data okay sources of big data the first one from where you can get the big data that is called as what social networking sites social networking sites so what in the social networking sites guys social networking sites are nothing but you have the whatsapp you have the facebook of the twitter whatsapp facebook okay guys whatsapp facebook twitter then you also have what's that linkedin ah then afterwards you also have what's that instagram all this insta and all these are what these are all called as what social networking sites these are called as what social networking sites so the social networking sites are, are basically referred as the major source of getting the big data major source of getting the big data getting my point next one after this guys you have the second source so what is the second source we can say second source as the banking application so across the globe the banking application is the major source considered as a major source guys banking applications are considered as the major source of getting the big data the banking applications are considered as the major source of getting the big data major source of getting what is that big data major source of getting the big data suppose you go to a bank and get an entry done so in your passbook you have made some entries that is some cash withdrawal entry and uh, some deposit entry and some online transfer entry some purchase entry some entries you have made it okay that means some transactions you have done it so but can you see here in this passbook as you have made only three transaction but it will give some seven to eight lines code am i right seven to eight lines it will print balance it will print a uh, deduction after that debit balance so that that means type of data that means banking data is considered as a massive or huge amount of data across the globe getting my point so we can get the data the big data we can also get it from what banking application that means this we are we have discussed as a business now business means what it can be social networking site which is a one type of business banking application is the another type of business from where we get the data okay then we can also get the data from what is that machine generated data machine generated data so what do you mean machine generated data guys the data which is generated by a machine suppose you have a ct scan machine suppose you have a ct scan machine okay so it scans of the human body whereas the ct scan machine or mri machine okay mri scan or ct scan machine whatever the machines you have it okay and then we have what's it mri okay scan or else we can also have what is that ct scan mri scan and even the ecg machine okay these are all the machines which generate some data am i right guys these are the machines which generate some data am i right everyone these are the machines which generates some data whereas even these machines can you see here generate some data so this kind of data is also considered as the big data that means a massive amount the ct scan machine generates a very massive amount of data so that is nothing but called as what machine generated data any uh, that is machine which generates the data is called as what machine generated data that's it okay then afterwards guys just a minute one minute
okay guys sorry so now guys <clears throat> okay so now guys after this okay so now can you see here uh, this is nothing but the uh, can you see here some uh, that is machine generated data after that fourth one what we can consider here is okay uh, that is called as what uh, <clears throat> iot sensors internet of things okay iot sensors we get the data from what sensors we get the data from what sensors these sensors basically measures what is that pressure okay and then it uh, measures the okay uh, that is uh, uh, even the okay gas pressure okay and then it measures even the temperature okay and even the okay wind all these are the sensors which basically measures but these sensors how it generates these all are will be connected to computers to required computers so this computer generates the data here the data will be recorded here and this data will be further processed further processed or transferred to us like this from in the files we received we extract it we transform it and we load it ultimately it will go like this okay so now guys so basically iot sensors i can give you one example guys whenever you travel uh and okay uh, like uh, uh, on the highways once you uh, will enter a, you know basically a type of a, you know a town or a village at the starting of this uh, town or a village you will find some you know a very big table type uh, table fans which is rotating very slowly am i right which rotates very slowly what it does exactly that measures the wind and those fans are nothing but a machines at sensors only and those are connected to the computers and whatever the thing is recorded the data will be transferred to the computer and from the computer again the data will be uh, that is kept into the files and again it is transformed further for this analysis so basically this is how exactly the moves the process moves on here okay so guys okay all of you following or not please let me know guys Yeah, now next after this again you have what is that guys the fifth one is human generated data human generated data it's not basically you will have that massive uh, but uh, still it can be considered as a big data only human generated data means the data which is generated by you and me okay the normal routine data that is basically you know a kind of a human generated data so this is also considered as the part of big data but guys this big data but this big data is basically has some categories that means we can say types of big data we can have various types of big data so now i will say types of big data now guys what are the types of big data generally guys you will have the following types of big data the first type of big data which you can consider okay which you can consider the well, that is first type of big data which you can consider okay the first type of big data which you can consider the first type of big data which you can consider is called as what structured data structured data means what i'll type it guys i'm writing it name id number and salary you can see this is the thing we have it uh, name is let us say alan and now guys i am using the id number as something like this and uh, salary i am making a sum okay uh, 10000 and bobby 20000 car 30000 this is the basically can you see here guys this is the data where can you see this data is in which format it is in the proper format of rows and columns or not these are the rows and these are the columns am i right guys everyone yeah these are the rows and these are the columns this kind of data is proper data so hence it is called as what structured data this kind of data is called as what guys 
structured data the data which is placed into the proper form of rows and columns the data which is placed in the proper form of rows and columns is called as what structured data am i right everyone yes am i audible guys yeah what happened am i audible to everyone or not yes so now guys this is nothing called as what structured data next one is what is it you have it the second one is semi structured data semi structured data means what this data is purely not structured as well as not unstructured it is semi structured you have some semi structure such as you have the data into what's that json files for example i'll give you the json file how the json file looks like and how the data will move the data in the json file will be given in the curly braces now if at all i am writing the first i am i am calling defining this data into json format how the data will be let us see it here name under the quotes double quotes and use the colon al now guys use a comma after this use it again id id then use it as it's a numeric data now you can place it normally again we have what is that guys uh, under this again you have what is that car uh, that is uh, uh, salary this is also numeric data so hence you can leave it as it is do not place under this and finally after this is done the data is closed the braces can you see here, this kind of data is called as what semi structured data it is called as what guys yeah it is called as what guys semi structured data this kind of data is called as what semi structured data and now finally the third one is called as what unstructured data unstructured data is nothing but unstructured data is nothing but guys this unstructured data is nothing but basically there will be no particular structure such as the photos in your mobile phone the videos the chat history and the voice notes all these comes under the unstructured data only there is no proper structure for it okay there will be no proper structure guys there will be no proper structure there will be no proper structure okay there will be no proper structure all the that is nothing but data is called as what unstructured 80% of the globe 80% of the data from the globe we'll get it in what unstructured format only 80% of the data across the globe we'll get it in what unstructured format only so guys these are the types of big data we can have structured semi structured and unstructured and this structured semi structured and unstructured can be placed under onto what is that into this type of files or into the databases or if we can extract it from the live streaming or that the as it is process so this is how the entire structure works so is everyone clear with this guys or you have any doubt you can ask me now yes guys tell me guys tell me now <clears throat> no sir made no doubts as of now okay 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 so this is how the things works off okay guys uh that's it so for the day guys that's it for the day and uh, so with the azure data breaks what kind of data we usually handles like structured or non structured unstructured only unstructured only okay unstructured semi structured and structure three of them will handle it basically not mostly you will have semi structured data okay thank you that's it guys <clears throat> so this is the thing we have it uh, please please go ahead so to learn data breaks do we need any predefined huh? background hello do you am i audible yeah tell me yeah 
No, I'm just asking you, what are the prerequisites to learn this other Kazoo database? See, basically, yeah, prerequisites is that if you know the Python or if you know the R or if you know the SQL, that is very well. Uh, you can just, you know, you can just uh, understand the code, what you can do. If not also, I will explain you and you have to put your efforts much on that because this is basically a purely type of a technical job where you have it what we are doing in Databricks. If you don't want the amount of coding, you don't need actually the coding. Simply you can go with the ADEF rather than going with the ADB. Okay, so I'm basically UK background. Okay. Yeah. So what do you suggest? Should I go for ADEF or ADB? I'm not really sure. And I would like to- You're, you're, a, you're, 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 you're basically, your technical, you're, you're from technical background or non-technical or- you know? I am basically a VTL developer, Informatica developer. Then you can go with the ADB. Why not? Definitely ADB will work for you. Okay. And to be Azure data engineer, what are the services we need to know? Like for, uh, is... for to be to be an Azure data engineer, you if you know ADF, then also you'll call as a Azure data engineer. If you know ADB, then also it is called as then also you are called as an Azure data engineer. If you know the synapse, then also you will call as an Azure Data Engineer only. Okay, so either one or should be fine. That means, right? Yeah. So that's I not. Heard, the reason yeah. I'm asking, I heard ADF also like something like it's an ETL tool only. And we have here you have mentioned ADB also ETL tool only, right? See, if so you have see on. what is what is the companies are doing till the job of data ingestion in a project. I'm telling you the live session, live uh, you know scenario what is going on right now in most of the projects up to the data ingestion up to the data ingestion ingestion means what extraction extraction up to this data extraction they're using the adf further for transformation and loading they're using the adb some projects okay because you have more good facilitation or we can say good facilities or very, you know, uh, flexible to uh, perform the process of data ingestion using uh, this, you know, uh, that is ADF. Because ADF does not use us any code. It is basically a menu driven this thing. But here you will have to write the code for everything. Extraction again, transformation and again, loading again. Basically, using this ADB, you can design. It is mainly focused on the visualization, data visualization. That means uh, visualization in the sense performing the analysis on the data, etc. Okay. So my understanding is like ADF might be something like a tool based, like uh, ETL. You can go with this ADF or ADB, anything, because already you have a technical background. You need not worry about it. Okay. And both are not, if I would like to join any training, both are not. Both good. means it will be very good. No issues. Okay. I'm trying to join any one of these. So what is this? Should I start with ADF or ADB? Like being an ADF. That you have to decide it. I can't tell because uh, you basically I'm telling you now, if you are mainly, you think that you can manage the amount of coding, then you can go with the ADB. If you don't want the coding because ADB is required anyways in the process. One time in one situation, you can do the job without ADF also. But ADB is very mandatory to have it mostly. So I just uh, how it's better to have ADB knowledge. You can just decide yeah, it. That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Any other questions? Sir, may I know what is Synapse used for? Synapse is totally a visualization process. It is basically called as a data warehouse of Azure Synapse. Okay. So data visualization analysis, I, I told you now analysis, data visualization, all analysis from this part. Once the data is loaded into that sync system, from here the data is picked up. And now we use a technique called OLAP, online analytical process. And this, on this, using this artificial intelligence, our machine learnings, all this we apply it further on this data. Whereas, can you see here, the machine learning, artificial intelligence, or machine learning or artificial intelligence, all this is the part of, what is that we have it? Uh, you know, the, you know, the synapse performs this job, this type of job, more focusing on the 
visualization of the data so sir like i just wanted to know adf and adb are enough to crack a job in the current market scenario more than enough more than enough synapse see in this particularly in this particular course we are covering synapse we are covering integration with even the snowflake i am covering integration with even you know the amazon web services integration with all various various you know things i'm using up here so anyways you will not have anything where you know you need not do that so you can do it very well that's not a problem okay so sir adf and adb are enough right yeah there's more than adf is enough adb individually is also enough adf and adb combination okay if you have that is very good if not it's not like that if you know adf you don't get the job definitely you will get the job even if you know the adf or not or or the adb that's not a thing there is a conception in misconception in the market that you know if you know the adf you should also know this adb then only you get a job it's not like that is a two different services you have it adf has its own functionality and adb has its own functionality okay the only thing is just the market is a bit low so worried that's all market is obviously in this november and december the market will be low okay always again it will pick up after january 15th okay that Thank is a, that is the every year uh, you know issue you will have it in it sector okay whether see whether you go with the training or whether you go for uh, real time jobs searching everything the the slang will be like it see every batch i'll be having 50 to 60 students but this november and december i have a less amount of students that okay. obvious that it, it does not means that you the market is drawn out first the flow will you know uh, move the it will slow down automatically the it will pick up because right now most of the times you know even in the us this ending of the year so everyone will be prepared for uh, you know easter and everything christmas okay. so things will slow down because we are totally dependent on the uh, all uh, you know the us and the uk and europe and you know we, we're all the western countries we're depending upon for the data for project everything so obviously it will have an impact even on our life isn't it or not yeah correct that's the thing okay sir okay that's it thank you guys no thank you yes am i audible guys yes sir good morning okay so let us start now so azure uh data bricks service guys everyone azure data bricks is a service which is used to perform the job of guys what is that azure data bricks is a service okay uh, azure data bricks is a service which is used to perform azure data bricks is a service which is used to perform the job of what etl that is extraction transformation and what is that loading extraction transformation and loading okay uh, between what is that clouds between the clouds and on premises clouds and what is it on premises between the clouds and what is it on premises okay guys so now <clears throat> between the clouds and on premises so here okay guys so when it comes to this etl so now guys etl is what basically uh, it is a service provided can you say azure data bricks is a service provided by microsoft and to perform the job of etl between the clouds and what is that on premises between the clouds and what is that on premises so now guys let us try to see this okay so what is basically an etl so etl as we know that it stand for what extraction it stand for what extraction transformation extraction transformation and what is that loading extraction transformation and what is that loading extraction transformation and loading now guys when it comes to this extraction transformation and loading this is a process this is a process all of you this is a process of is what is that data summarization this is a process of what guys 
data summarization this is the process of what data summarization this is the process of what data summarization okay it is a process of what data summarization it's a process of what guys data summarization it is the process of what data summarization wherein you have what is that source you have what's that source data source what is the data storage what's that you have it source data storage so now guys source data storage or source is a place where actually we can find the data and from the source ultimately we pass on the data to what is that guys target target we pass on the data to what is that guys target we pass on the data to what target we pass on the data to what is that target so uh, can you see here we have what is it source source means what a place where we can find actual data the place where we can find what is that guys actual data all of you following please yes guys yeah i'm audible ah uh, yes sir yes sir okay okay so now <clears throat> so we have what's it source and source is nothing but what a place where you can find the data so now in the source we can get the data of type of what files or else we can get the data in the form of what is the databases or else we can get the data in the form of what is it live stream we can also get the data from what live streaming data live streaming data okay we can get the data from what files we can get the data from what is it files we can get the data from what files we can get the data from what databases else we can get the data from what is that uh, live streaming data anyways guys so these files can you see here are of what we can have the csv files we can have what is that json files we can have what a csv file json file and then we have what is that excel files etc can you see here these are the various type of files you have it these are the various type of files you have it guys what is that these are the various type of files we have it okay what is that we have the these are the various type of files we have it okay guys so these are the various type of files you have it so what we do is ultimately we pull in the data we pull in the data into this adb that is called as azure data bricks this is called as what guys this is called as what the process of data ingestion it is called as what the process of what data ingestion okay so then once we pull in the data what we do we perform the process of so pulling in the data is a process of what extraction extraction <clears throat> and once the extraction is done guys and once the extraction is done then you will have what is a transformation then you will have what transformation transformation is what transformation is the process of actual process of data summarization and once the transformation is done finally what we do guys finally what we do we perform the loading we perform what is that loading so now the all together loading where loading the data into the yes guys loading data into what's it target that is called as destination destination or target getting my point so this is how we can make out using this or in the same process even if you have can you see here, the data access to be accessed from the database so what we do we using this adb that is azure data bricks we pull in the data and now again the same process that is called as e again then we have what is it t what did you have it t t is stand for transformation again finally we put the data into what is it and loading okay what is it loading is a final process and loading the data into what is that destination so destination is what 
destination is the actual target destination guys destination is nothing but the actual target you have it. getting my point all of you so these are the and now even from the live streaming even from the live streaming if at all you want to pull in the data the same way what is it you have it we use the adb we use the adb okay as your data bricks and then what we do we use the again what is it extraction and then we perform what is that transformation guys what is that transformation and then finally we use what is that loading we perform the loading and now guys this loading will be done ultimately into what is that destination what is that destination getting my point this is how the entire process works on okay extraction transformation and finally loading the data into this now guys uh, even we have discussed it in the last class but just i wanted to brush it up before we move ahead guys use what is that uh, let us see first of all what is a big data guys you already know what is big data na yes guys what is big data big data is nothing but what do you mean by big data guys huge data what is that big data is nothing but what huge data or huge information huge information is called as what big data what is that huge information is called as what big data guys huge information is called as what big data so now guys uh, big data so what are the sources of getting the big data can you just tell me guys from where you can get it yes any idea Yes, guys, I am audible. Ah, uh, maybe event hubs, ah, uh, storage account. Okay. Anyways, ah, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, we get the big data from various sources. So, such as what social networking sites, social networking sites. Okay, guys, we get the data from what social networking sites. That is big data. Such as what do you mean by social networking sites? WhatsApp, Facebook. Okay. facebook whatsapp whatsapp then we have twitter facebook whatsapp twitter then you have insta etc these are all the can see here these are all the social networking sites from where we get the data so guys data so basically what you can say this is a business na this is a business and from the business we get the data and data what we do data we put it in the form of what files or whatever the type you have it and these files we get it into adb that is azure data bricks and from here we get the data into azure data bricks perform the job of what extraction and then we do what transformation and then we do what loading and loading into what is that is finally destination loading into what destination destination getting my point loading the data into what is that destination okay loading the data into what is that destination finally the data will be loaded into what destination okay guys everyone yes am i audible to everyone or not yes sir okay guys that's it so now next apart from this we can also get the data yes we can also get the data from what social networking sites we can also get the data from what banking applications we can also get the data from what banking applications so what in the banking applications we can get the data and from here what we do we pull in the data and now <clears throat> this time whenever you have a banking applications the data will be loaded Our data will be stored in the form of what databases only, guys. From the databases, what we do, we, we pull in the data, guys. We pull in the data again the same process. What is that? Using the ADB as your data bricks, we perform the job of what extraction, transformation, and loading. And now finally, once we load it, guys. Finally, once we load it, ultimately it will be sent towards destination. 
Now, likewise, you can also get the data from what is it? Human generated data. That means human generated data is very rare. Okay, human generated means <clears throat> the data which is generated by you and me. Okay, human generated data. And apart from this, we can also have, okay, same process, human generated data will be again <clears throat> accessed into the ADB. And from the using the ADB, we perform the job of what extraction, transformation, and what's it loading. And ultimately, finally, we finally we load the return towards it destination. Finally, we load, load the return towards it destination. This is the destination you load it. Okay, guys. So you have what is that? Human generated data. What is that? Uh, social networking sites. We can get the data from what? Social networking sites, banking applications. Human generated data. Okay, guys, human generated data. These are the various things you have it. Getting my point, everyone? Now, apart from this, we can also get the big data in the form of what? Uh, machine generated. Guys, machine generated data. What is machine generated data? The machine generated data is nothing but the data which is generated by the machineries. Such as your CT scan machine is there, ECG machine is there. Okay, guys, uh, many machines nowadays we have everything. We are surrounded by machineries. So every machine, almost all every machine generates the data. Getting my point, everyone? Almost all every machine generates the data. So now, guys, every machine generates the data. So now, every machine generates the data. Okay, so whereas those generated, that is nothing but... Uh, Whenever the uh, can you see here, the data is can you see here? Uh, whenever can you see here? Whenever you have uh, that is nothing but any kind of machine generated data is there. Okay, any kind of machine generated data, any machine generates the data. That data, guys, will be required.